What's up guys, Tim here. And today we're gonna to be continuing our looping series by creating this really rad looking neon plastic loop. As usual, it's all stock plugins, default layout and after effects and super easy and approachable. So go ahead and open up AE and let's jump in. All right guys, so we're over here in AE and I just want to say thank you so much for following along. If this is your first time, your fifth time, I think I've only done six of these, but um, whether you've been here from the beginning or just joining in, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for following along. I'm excited for this one today as we continue our looping series. Um, this one's full of color, full of light, and it's gonna be a fun loop to make. So let's jump in and get going. So we're here with a blank slate. We're gonna create a new composition. So let's go ahead and do that right off the bat. We're gonna go here, new composition. Um, our composition name, let's name this base as we usually do. 1920 by 1080. Let's go 30 frames per second. And on our duration, I'm gonna go 20 seconds long. And let's hit okay. And this loop relies on only one effect and one layer. Let's go ahead and create that super simple setup. I'm gonna right click new, solid, and I'm just gonna create a black solid if your color isn't black already. 1920 by 1080, make sure that's the same. We can hit make comp size there, let's hit okay. Over here in our effects and presets, um, for our black solid with that selected, I'm gonna go and type it fractal noise. And you can see it right here, fractal noise. Double click on that. And we're presented with some clouds, some fog, however you wanna look at that, but we're gonna adjust that um, quite a bit. So with fractal noise and our fractal type, we're gonna change it from basic to swirly. You get a kind of cool effect there right off the bat. So uh, we'll leave this at soft linear on the noise type. I'm gonna invert this. And on our contrast, let's drop this to 70. And on our brightness, let's change this to negative 20. There's a lot of cool looks you can get with this uh, plugin. So this is just scratching the surface. I'm gonna drop down transform here. And on my scale, I'm gonna change this to 355. Really kind of get zoomed in here, get these larger chunks on here. Um, everything else looks good here. On the complexity, let's drop this to two. The default is six, just so we kind of soften the edges a bit. Um, let's drop down our sub settings here. And on our sub influence, we'll keep that at 70. And sub scaling, 56 is fine. So we'll just keep those there. Uh, let's twirl up sub settings. I'm gonna twirl down evolution options and check cycle evolution. And that's just so that our first frame and our last frame are the same and let's just go ahead up to evolution here and with my playhead at zero frames zero seconds I'm gonna hit that stopwatch and that is with zero evolutions and zero degrees so the default right there I'm gonna take my playhead all the way to the end of 20 seconds and just change this to one revolution so just one time we're gonna go 360 degrees so as you can see right there and that is the base of our um, animation here. So uh, super simple. I know a lot of the ones we've done in the past have been a lot of shape layers and repeaters and things like that, but this is built off this one single layer and one single plugin and makes it super easy. Let's move on to our next composition. So I'm gonna come back up here to my project panel, click my project panel and get my new comp button right here and click that. And I'm gonna name this one color. And we're gonna have the same dimensions, frame rate, and duration. So 1920 by 1080, 30 frames per second, and the duration is 20 seconds long. Let's hit okay. And from my project panel, I'm gonna grab my base layer, click and drag it into my color comp. And so I have my base comp here and inside my color comp. And let's go ahead and create two adjustment layers here. So uh, I'm gonna right click new adjustment layer right click new adjustment layer and this first one we're going to name this CC and the second one let's name this plastic and we're just naming these what they are so uh, we know what plugins we're using here so on our plastic one let's start with that so I'm going to come over to my effects and presets and just type in plastic and it's going to bring up CC plastic 
So making sure my plastic adjustment layer is selected, I'm going to double click on CC plastic. And as you can see, it's already giving us a nice effect here, adding some dimension to this, but let's play around with it just a bit. So I'm gonna drop down surface bump here. And on my bump layer, I'm gonna change this from plastic that it's selected to and change that to base. Property, luminance is fine. Softness, 20, height, 25. Those look good. I, I like how this looks already. Um, there's really nothing we're gonna change here. Let's twirl up surface bump and twirl down light. And all I'm gonna do over here is on my light intensity, I'm going to drop that to 55. Just kind of bring that down a bit. And then on my light height, I'm gonna bump that to 100 and get some more of these glows in here. And I'm gonna twirl that up. I'm gonna twirl down shading. And on my shading, let's go from 75 to 50 on ambient. On our diffuse, let's bump that to 55. On our dust, let's go to 35. Specular, that can stay there, as well as the roughness and metal. So this is looking good. If I play through that just a bit, you can see now we have a lot more definition with these glows, where these edges are. They're kind of more highlighted and everything. So this is great. I'm gonna bring that back to the beginning. I'm gonna twirl up my CC plastic. And then down here in my timeline, I'm gonna go ahead and click on CC. And that's for our color correction. And over in our effects and presets, so my first one, I'm going to type in toner and bring up CC toner. I'm gonna to double click on that, making sure my CC layer is selected in my timeline. And we're gonna play around with some tones here. So on our highlights, we'll leave those at white. On our midtones, I'm gonna click on my color box I'm gonna type in 535353. Five, three, five, three. We're just gonna get a nice uh, mid to low gray here. I'm gonna hit OK. And on our shadows, let's leave that at black. So it's already looking a little more uh, metallic y, maybe some like liquid metal, which is a cool effect. But I just wanted to tone down those mid tones quite a bit before I add some other color to this. So let's twirl up CC Toner. And right underneath CC Toner, I'm going to come over to my effects and presets and type in color balance. And I found color balance right here. I'm going to double click that. And we're going to introduce some color through this uh, plugin right here. So I'm going to run through these values and you can always play with these afterwards or play with them right now just to get whatever color you want. Um, but I'm going to give you the values that worked best for me, but feel free to change these as you wish. So um, on our red balance, I'm going to type negative 60. On our green balance, negative 55. On our blue balance, negative 50. And then again on our mid-tone red balance, let's go negative 100. On our mid-tone green balance, negative 95. And on our midtone blue balance, I'm gonna type in 20. And then these last three here, red balance, I'm gonna go 40. It's looking nice. Green balance, negative 100. And blue balance, 35. And this looks good. So we have a purple hue here, but we still kept a lot of these glows and these highlights. You're kind of getting the pinks in with the gradients um, where the highlights and the shadows are meeting kind of where those edges are. So this is a nice look if I play through that. Kind of a liquid purple metal. But we are not gonna stop here. Let's go ahead and move on to our next comp. So I'm gonna come back over to my project panel, find my new comp button. I'm gonna name this one FX, and then same everything as we've been using. I'm gonna hit OK. And so my FX comp, I have nothing in here. I'm gonna come over to my project panel and grab my color comp that we just created and drop that into my FX comp. And so now that we have that in here, I'm going to create three adjustment layers uh, for this comp. So new adjustment layer, right click new adjustment layer, and one more. And this first one, I'm going to change the name of this to blur. Second one, glow. And this third one, blobby. And this is kind of gonna bring our texture in. 
Uh, maybe you've used this plugin, maybe not, but this is a fun one and you're about to see. So uh, with our blobby layer selected, I'm gonna come over my effects and presets and type in blobby and it will bring up the CC Blobalize and I'm gonna double click that. It's a weird name, I know. I think that's how you say it, Blobalize. Blobalize, yeah. Blobalize, that's a fun word to say. Um, okay, so with our Blobalize effect here, I'm gonna drop down Blobbiness and on our blob layer, I'm gonna change that one to color. So that should be your fourth layer there. On our property, we'll keep that at lightness. On our softness, I'm gonna drop this to one. And our cutaway, let's drop that all the way to zero. And we're getting a nice like glass effect here, which is really cool. So let's twirl up our blobbiness. I'm gonna drop down light. And on my light intensity, I'm gonna change that to 200. And the light height, I'm gonna drop that to 50. And the light direction, we'll keep that negative 45 right now. So let's twirl up light. I'm gonna drop down my shading here. And on my ambient, I'm gonna go to 40. My diffuse, I'm going to bump that to 60. Specular, 100. And the roughness and metal, those look good there too. So let's move on to our glow layer. So I'm going to click on glow in my timeline here and come over to effects and presets and type in glow and just double click on that. Color channels is fine. All we're really going to do is drop this threshold to 55. Our radius, I'm going to bump that to 80 just to kind of soften up those glows here, which look really nice. And then our glow intensity, I just want to drop that a little bit, just a hair. So instead of one, I'm going to type in 0.8. And everything else is fine with this glow plugin, but as you can see, we're getting some nice light, kind of looks like it's coming through here. Um, the blues and the pinks are getting some nice glows coming off of it, so this is looking good. I'm going to go down to my timeline and click on my blur adjustment layer. And over my effects and presets, let's type in Gaussian Blur. I'm going to double click, making sure my blur layer is selected. And we're just going to bump this just a little bit to 5. And it's not going to do a whole lot, but if I turn it off and turn it back on, I'm going to zoom in right here. You can see, I'm going to turn it off. You can see it's sharp right on these edges. If I turn it back on, it's softening these specular highlights just a little bit which I really like, but this is a preference thing too. If you like that sharp look, just leave it off. But for me, I just liked how we soften those edges up just a bit. So I'm gonna zoom back out here, kind of recenter. And that's all we got for our FX layer. So uh, super simple. We're just kind of cruising along with this one. We're gonna create one more comp and then finish this thing out. So I'm gonna come back to my project panel and I'm going to new comp. And I'm going to name this one render because this is going to be our render comp. Same everything, hit OK. And up in my project panel, let's go ahead and grab that FX comp and drag that down into our render comp. So we have that in here. And nothing too crazy in this one as well. So I'm going to right click new adjustment layer. And one more time. And this top one, I'm just going to name this spot blur. If I can type and spell. Spot blur, there you go. And on the second one, let's just name this noise. And so with my noise adjustment layer selected, let's go over to our effects and presets. And I'm gonna type in noise, HLS. And let's grab this HLS auto one. So I'm gonna double click on that, making sure my noise layer is selected. And on my noise type, I'm gonna change that from uniform to grain. And I'm gonna zoom in just so we can see this happen right here. So on my hue, I'm gonna go 5%. Lightness, 5%. Saturation, 5%. The grain size, we'll leave that at 1. But on the noise animation speed, so this is how fast this noise is animating in our comp, I'm going to drop that to 12. And so if I turn that off, turn it back on, you can really see that, that noise right here if I zoom in a little more. So you can see it kind of introducing itself, especially right here in these pinks and these blues. Uh, just to give it some nice texture, maybe a little more realism to it. So. I'm gonna zoom back out here. Last thing we're gonna do here, I'm gonna click on my spot blur, go to my effects and presets, and just type in fast box blur. So fast box, that's all we gotta type there. So spot blur layer is selected. I'm gonna double click on fast box blur. And on the blur radius, I'm going to change this to 15. That's all we need to do, the iterations is fine. 
And if you've watched any of my past tutorials, you probably know what's about to happen here. So with my spot blur layer selected, I'm going to come up to my toolbar and find my pen tool here. And so I'm going to grab that. And all I really want to do is kind of draw a mask where I think these curves um, are going to come out nicely. So if I turn off my fast box blur, I can see right here I have my playhead at zero frames, zero seconds. And we get some good movement right in the middle there. Yeah, so I like this curve right here. If you can see, I'm going to change this back to full just so we can see. You see these kind of curves coming through here. I'd love to try to outline those pretty roughly, but it just gives me a good guide um, to follow this mask along. So I'm not going to use just like a regular ellipse on this like I usually do, but I'm actually going to draw this one. So making sure my spot blur layer is selected and you know that I'm in masking mode because right next to my pen icon is that little circle inside the white box. So I'm just going to start drawing and following those curves just a little bit just to give it a nice looking mask, maybe something like this. You can kind of see I'm just roughly like following those curves and we can always come back and adjust this, which I probably will maybe already just bring this one over here and up like this. And so if I turn my fast box blur back on over here in my effect controls, you can see now that we are masking out our blur. So I'm gonna go back up to my toolbar and go back to my selection tool. You can also hit V on your keyboard. And with my spot blur right here, down in my timeline, I'm gonna twirl down spot blur, and twirl down masks, and twirl down mask one. And the first thing I'm gonna do, we need to invert this so that the blur is affecting the outer edges of this bonding box instead of inside of it. So all we have to do there is hit inverted, and we're switching that. And I'm going to use this mask feather kind of to gradually make this blur uh, come into our scene here. So we're going to crank this way up. So on our mask feather, I'm going to type in 200. And you can see now our mask is kind of gradually coming into that blur. It's not a harsh line. So if I drop this back down to zero and kind of click off of this, if I zoom in here, you can see our, our mask is very, very harsh where that blur is coming. So if I come back down here, change this to 200, we'll click off of this, and you can see now it's very gradual. So you can see our blur is playing really nicely in this. So we have our center where our mask is really defined, a lot of definition. We're getting a lot of those nice highlights and edges here. Ooh, that's a nice scene right there. And then way off in the distance is kind of what we're uh, faking the effect of. We're blurring out these lights and these shadows and the movement. Everything's just looking really good and we can go ahead if we wanted to and go back in there and play with that mask and adjust it however we want. But this looks really good um, as it is. So, well, all right guys, this was a quicker one, nice and easy, but just shows you the power of one effect and what we can do with that. And what's nice about this is that we can go back and change the colors, change the fractal noise, maybe make it smaller, make it larger, make it more complex. And it all lives in that one single layer, so. This looks awesome. I'd love to see what you guys do with this. So if you create this or use it in a project or have your own variation of it, um, let me know. Let me see it. You can hit me up on Instagram at Timmy Dwyer. You can use the hashtag Timmy Dwyer. And I'd love to say hi to you over there. I'd love to see what you're working on and just get to know you. So if you'd like, I have this project file over on my site, radloops.com. I have this project file, the project file, past tutorials, and some other cool assets. So go check that out if you'd like. Otherwise, I will see you on the next tutorial. I got some fun ones coming. But until then, you guys have the best day.